This is Kevin the interpreter, by the way. Give some love to Kevin right there. Kevin's very good at his job. I like to get him warmed up the way I like to get my see, see if I get him warmed up. Broon show right this way. Comedy and fun, naked monkey bondage. A bunny will come from my right ear and kiss my nose. <laughs> I didn't see bunny. 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 Oh, okay. Bunny. I want to see the animals. Is it why it's bunny? Bunny. Okay, cute. I like it. In the back, come watch my show. I'm going to follow you home and do this in your den. Get in here, you magnificent people. Come, come on over. Anyway, I have kilt in the front row, eating garlic tater tots. Very Gilroy of you, sir. And then might I say, you're quite the Scottish gentleman. You're in a kilt, and yet you've crossed your ankles without me having to tell you to. Thank you, sir. You didn't want to, you know, go the other route. I need to pay. I should I go to PayPal? You're at Scottish guy at, not PayPal, what's it called? Only fans. That's the <laughs> like PayPal, that's the wrong joke. What's that place where all the ladies do the sexy posing? I want to start an OnlyFans where it's just me in the outfit, just kind of. Uh, <laughs> really? <laughs> all my clients are that dude. It's like, is it sexy? Is he naked? No, it's just brewing in his costume, just doing this. Make the money. Double zero? Who's double zero? Is that a. Who? Jim Otto. And that's the, uh, the Raiders? The Raiders, yeah. Really? Oh, you're pissed at them now? They moved? Okay. <laughs> I thought you'd all go, yay! Oh, they went to Vegas. To hell with them! I've always thought if you ever want to clean up the uh, outstanding warrants in a community, just go to a Raiders. Uh... It's kind of true. It's kind of true. It's kind of true. It's kind of true. <laughs> Raiders Nation. Ew! <laughs> That's kind of a fun rant. Ew, that's not really a football rant. Ew. Sort of, I hate the team that I don't like. And I've heard the people that, that they, they love their team so much, they say that they beat another team, they say that team sucks, which they just beat them, which means they just beat a weaker team. They should say that team is awesome, and we beat them, therefore we're, you know what I'm saying? So, or am I trying to purse this out too much? I should shut up, I know. <laughs> Brood, stop reading into our culture. Anyway, I got a little box back here on wheels. You always know it's a show and there's a box on wheels. All right, don't get excited. <laughs> I do have a whip, sir. That's true. Oh, man. Come on over. What else can we make him say? Let's see if Kevin can adapt to how I announce the show. Broon show, comedy, fun, uh, sarcasm, improvisational wit, amazing stunts. Okay, so it looks like that. But what if I make it kind of like a cute little Muppet voice? Watch this. Broon show. Magic and juggling and improvisational comedy, oh boy. Yeah, he got a little sexy, didn't he get a little cute? Now I'll no, no, make it like a Barry White thing, watch this. Broom show. Comedy and juggling and bull whips, oh yeah. I think I know the only fans I want to now join is just have Kevin just sign stuff. Right, Kevin? You could do that. Take your shirt off, just sign stuff, and... How are you, sir? How are the other droogs? <laughs> you dress like a droog, sort of. That's right, Bruin, that's the way to win over the millennials. Make a reference from 1969. <laughs> or 71, when did that movie come out? I don't know, it's Yeah, clockwork. Anyway, read the book, kids. Anyway, kids don't read anymore, they just respond to things on TikTok. <laughs> Come on, don't groan at me, man, Jesus. I'm not the one ruining millennial culture. <laughs> really, it's not the millennials' fault either. It's, it's uh, what's, it, what's that music guy? Spotify, right? Every song has to have the same four chords to get play, so basically every song sounds the same. <laughs> Jimi Hendrix would not have succeeded in this culture. Anyway, Kevin, I thank you for being so polite about yesterday. Kevin, I am right-handed. I do a lot of bullwhip tricks. He stood on that side of the stage yesterday. You've been a very good sport. I apologize again. I'm sorry about what happened. <laughs> I, didn't, I, I didn't mind that you called me daddy afterwards. That was kind of weird. <laughs> Come on over, suburban white guys. I'm giving away khaki shorts with superfluous pockets. Come in here. 
Come on, cul-de-sac dwellers, come meet a guy that won't, they won't let into your gated community. Get in here. We're going to talk how you're mostly part of all the problems. He says as a white middle-aged man, well, I'm trying to fight against my own type. <laughs> I'm going to warn you right now, this show's going to have a parade go by. During the parade, we'll put a little time out on the show. We'll say hello to the queen. We'll do hip, hip, huzzah, hip, hip, huzzah, God save the queen. All right. So, so I don't get arrested. <laughs> Who else do you want over here? Suburban white guys, there's one going by. Come on in here, buddy. You were talked into this event. You didn't want to come here today. Get, oh, go get a drink. All right, then come back. I've memorized you, sir. Ball cap, Oakley's. Where will I find another guy like you in North Central California? Well done, sir. <laughs> Way to break the mold. Come on over. Who else is here? Emo kids. Come on over, emo kids. Yeah. Woo. We're all going to smoke cold cigarettes and talk about ferrets. Come on over, emo kids. I've got Fallout Boy backstage. We're going to grind into a powder. Combine it with Evanescence. Dominate the hot topic. Do a line. Come on over, emo kids. You're sad and you think it makes you interesting, and it doesn't. That's right. I'm going to say it the way it is. Somebody has to. Might as well be the clown at the Ren Fair, right? <laughs> Might as well be the guy dressed like an organ grinder monkey, right? <laughs> Looks like something Tim Burton would pull out of his navel. I don't know what the hell I'm going for here. Come on over, Rednecks. We're all going to chew tobacco and misinterpret the Bill of Rights. Come on over, Rednecks. We're going to learn what a comma does to a sentence. Get over here. You easily manipulated voters, get in here. <laughs> Vote against your own best interest, but you know, freedom. <laughs> I know, I know, it's the kill. The little Mel Gibson moment there. Thanks for laughing, by the way, because those jokes work here. One mountain chain that way, whole different response. Bunch of little red laser lights appear on me. Bunch of very well adjusted, adjusted men when there are very clear political statements on the side of tractor trailers. They apparently hate Nancy Pelosi a lot. That's what, what did she ever do to them? I don't know. Anyway, these are jokes. Thanks for laughing. Because I never know where I am until I do those little pre-show jokey jokes. You know, the suburban white guy joke, emo kid joke, redneck joke. Here at Northern California Renaissance Fair, you guys are pretty well adjusted. You're willing to laugh at yourselves. And I like that. I did the suburban white guy joke, suburban white guys laugh. Did the redneck joke? Redneck guys laugh. Did the emo kid joke? I didn't hear an emo laugh. I don't know if emos are capable of human joy. I'm terrified to know what that would sound like, actually. They could record an emo being joyous. What would that be? Like punching a raven in the taint? Ah! What the hell is that? I'm in right now. Family coming in. I see you got a kid with you. I got room in the front because the kid's kind of small. Right here in the front. If you guys want to sit in the front. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's in the shade, right over here, I got right over here. You guys are very nice, leave this area open for little kids. So over here, ma'am, near this nice lady, over here, wherever you want to go. How you doing there, little buddy? Have a seat. By the way, I was going to crack the whip anyway. I don't want that to come off weird, what I just did. <laughs> that was weird, right? <laughs> no, I, I wasn't going, sit down! I wasn't, where are you going, Dad? Right, right in front of me, what the hell? It's all in the same shade. You like parallel views? All right. You like to dangle? You like this angle? All right. <laughs> Killed guy, you want to jump in on that punchline? I'm already in the punchline. All right. What's the boy? What's your name, young man? What's your name, lad? What's your name? Isaacy. Isaacy. Isaac a little added to it. Isaacy from the Latin Isaacal, Isaacal, a uh, messenger of uh, Hermes. <laughs> Isaacy, my name is Brune. Isaacy. I'm going to ask you a question, all right, buddy? Don't be shy. Don't keep stabbing the hay bale. That's the last four more weekends, all right? <laughs> Isaac, I've been cracking a whip here for a while talking to people, but I want to bond with you because my show's not designed for kids, parents, for life. I'm not a dirty show, but I'm a bit of a talker. I'm long-winded. I might Eddie lose Murphy. the kid. I'm sorry? I am not Eddie Murphy, sir. No, I'm wrong race, wrong age, wrong uh, income tax bracket, quite frankly. <laughs> Isaacy, pay attention, buddy. What causes that noise? Don't tell him, Dad. Don't tell him, Mom. Let's see what he says. He might not talk. I don't know. He might be shy. I'll do it again. He's looking shy. Nothing? I'll tell him. Isaacy, it's called the sound barrier. The sound barrier is an invisible barrier that surrounds all living things. It's comprised entirely of tiny, invisible dwarves. These tiny, invisible dwarves stand upon each other's shoulders and make a giant wall of dwarf-like humanity. When Uncle Brune throws the whip out there, the enemy goes over 700 miles per hour, forcing two of the dwarves apart. There is then a suction created, which rips them back together. They crack their skulls, make that noise, and die instantly. 
Do you want to know where babies come from, Ozzyaki? Also involves dwarves. If you're new to my show, welcome aboard. My name is Brood. If you've seen my show before, I'm going to ask you guys right now, if you know my show, don't ruin the jokes. Hopefully you know what I mean by that. Let the jokes work the way they're intended. Thank you. Ozzyaki, watch the pretzel, buddy. Explain something, folks. This is really the show, all right? A lot of you are looking at me right now. This guy seems clever. He seems funny. I wonder when he starts. Guys, I started the second I walked out here, all right? I admit it. I'm a little different in the world of writing entertainers. We're talking jugglers, magicians, clowns. Most people like me walk out. What do they do? They make the audience all cheer and applaud. I bet you you've already had it done to you three or four times already. I didn't do that because I think I'd rather respect my audience. I don't want to patronize you. We're going to have a comedy conversation, not so much a show. Which means, from here on out, you guys seem pretty cool. You'll be able to respond on your own when I have done something genuinely badass, all right? Now, we'll do it again. We'll hit what's, we'll hit what's up to the target. It'll be more impressive because it's shorter. The only time in life that's true. <laughs> Kids aren't getting it. Aziaki, open your mouth. I do this just right. You get a snack. <laughs> if I get it wrong, you get a severed brood finger. You can give to one of the scientists from Fifth Element to grow a brand new Lilu. Come on, nerds, that was a good reference. And all you toxic men looking around going, yeah, you nerds, you're here too, all right? No one cares about your ball cap and your Oakleys. That's right, I'm talking truth. I'm nervous. I broke it. I made it even smaller again. I don't know why I did that. That was a dumb move. You guys are waking up. I'm feeling pretty bloody cocky, and the beer just met the Vicodin. Let's make some bad decisions, shall we? Let's strike the next target out of the mouth. That's a stupid joke. <laughs> I do this for the kids. Look, kids, it's Elmo without skin. La 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 la. Whip my face. It puts the lotion in the basket or it gets the hose again. <laughs> kind of a dark joke, don't you think? Yeah, but Bruno Sodi seems to be keeping up with your deconstructionist avant-garde style. Even Aziaki is cool, so I think we're all right. They are cool, but it is time for you to go. The basket? Yes, the basket. I gotta go. You gotta go. Will it hurt? No. Will I dream? I hope not. Aziaki, look away. I'm ready. I am available for children's parties, ladies and gentlemen. Just try to let her be on your door in pig's blood. I'll be there in a fortnight. Here's what we'll do. We'll take the next target, place it behind the back, crack the whip, hit the target. If I hit the target, obviously you guys cheer and applaud. If I hit it, I may miss. If I miss it, you're quiet. I try again. I don't give up. Good lesson for all the kids and Aziaki in the crowd. Every now and then you may stumble and fall, but you get back up and you keep trying. Third option, I missed the target. Instead, tag myself in the butt with a supersonic crack of a seven-foot bullwhip. Make a lot of noise. It'll help to cover up my girl is screaming, all right? Someone feel free to volunteer to suck the whip venom out of my hiney. <laughs> Apologies, killed guy. I have no idea why I locked eyes with you to deliver that. <laughs> Plenty of pretty women I could have flirted. I wanted to get to know discount Mel Gibson. <laughs> Sorry, sir. <laughs> You don't want to know that connection, neither would I. All right, I hit it, you go nuts, I miss it, you're quiet. Third option, me and Scottish guy go backstage and woed up. <laughs> I missed, okay. Good job, by the way, you're the first audience to get that right today, thank you. All right, take two, Aziaki, here we go. Thank you. Aziaki, you've been a good sport, buddy, a little snack for you, there you go. Five second rule, Aziaki. Eat the cracker. Yes, Dad, give him the cracker. Eat the damn cracker, child. It is the body of food. You are the continuation. Sorry. I know. 
I shouldn't be around people. Beautiful woman, big wide brimmed hat. I'm pointing right at you. I have a bit of a yellow bodice on. What is your name, love? Sabrina. Sabrina, beautiful name. My name is Brun. Sabrina, I am thinking of a number between one and ten. Sabrina, what number am I thinking of? Seven. Yes. Scotsman, what's your actual name, sir? Peter, catch this deck of cards if you would. I want you to, ooh, one hand's a good job, Peter. I'm going to ask you to look at the deck of cards. You need both hands for that. Have your friends help you. Uh, I'm going to talk to Sabrina a bit. You're going to make sure that deck of cards, uh, Peter, is not Mark Ridger. Suspicious. When I want it back, you pop it back in the box, toss it up to me. Sabrina, I only want to get the cards back from Peter. I will fan out the deck, choose a card, think of its color. From here on out, Sabrina, I don't care about suit or value. I don't care about nine or ten or jack or club, just if it's a red card or a black card. Children uh, playing cards are either red or black. Now, before we get them back from Peter, let's make sure you and I, Sabrina, have a strong psychotic bond. Sabrina, look at my gigantic forehead. Imagine there's a doorway dead center. Imagine the doorway opens and a white rabbit hops out, followed by Gray Slick. Then you go inside my head and there's Paul Kantner chain smoking and bitching incessantly on VH1 Classic, while a giant sentient beanbag chair made entirely of the contents of a dried lava lamp, 14 tacos, and a sheep that I met last night named Larry made sweet love to a gnome. <laughs> Oh, I got 25 more minutes of show left, Kevin. I'll get you. <laughs> All right. Uh, are our minds connected, Sabrina? Yes. Uh, Peter, big loud voice, is that a regular non-rigged deck of cards? Yes. All right, Peter, I'm going to ask you to toss a deck of cards up here, buddy. I'm going to ask you to toss a deck of cards up to me like I asked you earlier, buddy. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, but wait for my hand to get out of my pocket. That... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there are two kinds of people in this audience right now. Those that are getting a really subtle joke that's happening, and those that are, quite frankly, free to go. Seriously. Down the street, they're doing Mass Singer. That's about your pace. You came in late. My name is Brune. This is Sabrina. This is Kevin. That's Hazanaki. But right now, we're dealing only with Sabrina. Sabrina, I've chosen a card. It's either red or black. Sabrina, red or black? Red, ladies and gentlemen. Sabrina. Now, I like that you responded. I like it better, Sabrina, they didn't go nuts. And the reason why they didn't go nuts is because you had a 50-50 chance, right? Yeah. They're not going to get really crazy until you can do it again. Sabrina, card numero dos. Let's choose this one. Red or black? Black. Ladies and gentlemen, Sabrina. <laughs> Sabrina, do you think you can do this three times in a row? <laughs> I think you can, especially if you stick to your now-established rhythm. <laughs> Kids aren't getting this. <laughs> Sabrina, red or black? Red, well done, Sabrina! Look, oh, Aziaki! Look, magic is real! <laughs> All right, that's a joke to make you laugh. Here's what we're really going to do with the deck of cards. Sabrina, my love, I'm going to riffle down the deck. Thus, you're going to say stop. Wherever Sabrina says stop, I will stop riffling. And I will cut the deck open. We'll take whatever cards face down the left. We'll use that card for the next part of the show. It would have been the nine of hearts. I had to stop me there. Does that make sense, Sabrina? It's like I came over here, darling, to that classic magician's pick a card, but I'm obviously not going to do that because of the restraining order. So, <laughs> how you been? Is that him? <laughs> Who's keeping up right now to the show I'm doing? You guys got really quiet. I know it's hot, but let me explain something, folks. I am doing three shows simultaneously. One for the tourists, one for the slightly more advanced people, one that only I find funny, all right? I admit it, that joke, I jumped you from here to there very quickly. All right, Sabrina, darling, I riffle, you say stop. All right, here we go. Right there, we cut the deck open. Oh, we got a jack. See if you got a blackjack hand. No. Uh, five of clubs. Got that right there. Little Peter got it right there. A little Ozzy Hockey. All the kids there. Gentlemen there. Beautiful people there. Everybody got it. Gentlemen over there. Five of clubs. Five of clubs. Just five of clubs. Let's all say the name of the card. Five of clubs. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, before I walked out on stage this afternoon, I was backstage in my super secret lounge suite in my hyperbaric meditation chamber filled with warm apple sauce. I had electrodes attached to all nine of my nipples while angry ducks beat out iron butterflies. And I got a DeVita on my forehead head with barbecue funyuns. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He's a little cocky, but he took 20 seconds to get to the end. And from that time, I had a vision of the future. I saw Kevin. I saw Peter. I saw her. 
<laughs> What's your name again, darling? I forgot your name. Sabrina. Sabrina. And I saw one card. Folks, I keep a third deck of cards right backstage. Before every pause, before every show, rather, I pause. I choose a card out of the backstage deck. Everybody watch my hands. I placed a card right here. As you can see, it's been here peeking out the entire time. Sabrina, can you please confirm that at no point during the show thus far have my hands ever left the ends of my arms? <laughs> Sorry, darling? Not as far as you can see. <laughs> Did you have brownies for breakfast this morning, Sabrina? Yeah. Sabrina, could you at least acknowledge that if this were the five of clubs, that would be impressive? Yeah. It'd be a freaking miracle, Sabrina. If I did this in Morton County, I could start a cult. <laughs> Audience, would you be impressed now with the five of clubs? Yes? Yeah. The pair of tune applause as I present the five of crap. <laughs> don't say crap. <laughs> Hang on. Crap. Crap. Why does it go in? <laughs> poop. So poop comes out, but crap goes in. Oh, I love your language. You know what? <laughs> You're a cool audience, and you're about to have to put up with some of the little distraction here. I can't stop, so I'll tell you, we'll put a little pause in the show to make sure I'm up to any shenanigans. Keep an eye on me, at least one of you should. I'll say, put the card right up here in my hat, and they'll move on to the show in just a second. But as I said, the queen's about to walk by. We'll do all the hip hip huzzah, hip hip huzzah, God save the queen stuff, and then back to this part of the show. Stand up if you like, young people. Oh, did she go by yet? Oh, here she comes. Sorry. Like I said, guys, I go hip, hip. You guys, huzzah, hip, hip, huzzah, hip, hip, huzzah, and then right into God Save the Queen. All right, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, I present the glorious Regina Elizabeth. Hip, hip. Huzzah. Hip, hip. Huzzah. Hip, hip. Huzzah. God Save the Queen. Hello, Your Majesty. Woo. Oh, my God, she knows my name. <laughs> that might not be a good thing in a monarchy. I was trying to blend in, damn it. I owe her a lot of money. I wonder if she has an OnlyFans. It would be weird paintings you'd go to see in every guy painting. All right. Now, I apologize about that. That is part of doing this job, and I'm not usually a joke guy. My show is more just a conversation that occasionally has funny moments happen. But because that happened, I want to get us back into a comedy sense. So let's see if I know any pu jokes that are not dirty. Okay, I got a few. All right, uh, this uh, grasshopper walks into a bar. The bartender says, hey, we've got a drink named after you. The, guy, the grasshopper says, really? You got a drink named Steve? <laughs> see, that's why I don't do jokes. <laughs> Oh, here's one. This is not really a funny one. It's one that, mo that comedians tell each other. It's more of a clever joke. A uh, guy walks into a bar. The bartender says, hey, aren't you that guy for the joke that doesn't have the punchline? Guy says, yes. <laughs> okay, back to the show. <laughs> now, a few of you are keeping an eye on me. I never touched the card. And because you were a cool audience, I figured I was going to make the trick even better. Oh, sure, I could turn over the five of clubs like Sabrina stopped my thumb at, but you're expecting that. Watch now as I magically transform it into the ten of diamonds. <laughs> All right, let me explain what's going on here, gang. I just screwed this trick up, but I'm doing it for you beautiful people this afternoon. This is not a magic trick. If this was a magic trick, that would be the five of clubs. What I'm doing is called mentalism, the ability of seeing the future. I've been doing this part of my show since I suffered a pretty serious head trauma about 15 years ago. Now, a few of you know the story. I was kind of famous in the business for almost dying doing this show. I used to do a suspended straitjacket escape. And that Sunday, uh, being a straitjacket, two stout guys like that dude and the Scottish guy right there, Peter, they'd pull a rope, they'd lift me up in the air, and I would attempt to get out of a straitjacket. I was doing that stunt at an event in uh, Kenosha, Wisconsin, uh, on a very hot, humid day, twice as hot as this, three times more humid. I got about 15 feet up, my cable breaks, and I fall. I used to hang by my waist, so I hung kind of sideways. There's my little feet kicking. But just picture me going, bang. Broken shoulder, broken wrist, fractured skull, knocked unconscious. I wake up 12 hours later. I'm in a trauma center. have a tube down my throat. My wrists are tied to the bed. I'm naked. Some guy has given me a sponge bath. <laughs> then a nurse comes in the room, and the guy just ran. <laughs> nice guy, killed. Anyway... <laughs> From that time to this, the wrap to my noggin, the medication I was on, gave me these powers. Usually they work every now and then I have a misfire. You've been a nice audience. I'm trying to be an honest entertainer, so I'll tell you what. I'll turn the card over. We'll have a little moment of honesty, and then I'll move on to the fire eating. But I'll make you a deal. If it were the uh, five of clubs, big giant round of applause. If I only missed it by five and one color. 
polite pity applause. Here we go. I'll do it very dramatically. I'll do it like David Copperfield. <laughs> For the millennials, I'll do it like David Blaine. <laughs> Yeah, laugh it up. That dude's a millionaire. I'm playing a fruit stand. <laughs> I got to ask you guys. Round of applause. Who thinks I really got it wrong? Oh, damn. <laughs> Peter, backstage. Turn the van. I'll be right there. We'll travel the country. Sit the hell down, Peter. <laughs> Peter's like, yay, backstage pass. Round of applause if you think I'm probably just jerking you around. I was going to give the card as a souvenir to the kid, but the kid is gone. Well, how old are you, darling? Twelve. You're a kid. You're close enough. Come on up here, twelve-year-old kid. It's the youngest person in the audience, it looks like. Hello. I'm a magic talk. Oh, my God, you're tall for twelve. Okay. Just take the card. What's your name? Jasmine. Jasmine, you're sweet. You're named after a Disney princess. Put your phone away. This is the real world. <laughs> I like how when you stood up, you had to bring it with you. Like a comfort. I'm stalling because you haven't taken the card yet, Jasmine. <laughs> Jasmine, Jasmine, come here. I know you're a little old for this, but I like giving kids a little something that maybe. I think you're probably keeping up with the show. You seem pretty smart. But name an animal, Jasmine. Name an animal. <laughs> What's that? Panda. Panda. <laughs> Can we all agree a panda is a quadruped? Yeah. And we can all agree that in the balloon animal form, it will look like a dog, yes? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. There you go, darling. Panda. You enjoy that. <laughs> At least it was a quadruped. I had a kid here yesterday, I swear to God, said, manatee. <laughs> little homeschooled Montessori brat, that one. To eat fire takes three very important ingredients, torches, guts, and absolutely no social life in high school whatsoever. I qualify on all three counts. You may not know it to look at me today, but at one point in my life, I was kind of a geek. Again, I say to people that have seen my show before, you all know the jokes. You know what's coming. Please don't ruin the joke. Thank you. Yeah, uh, hold your applause till I do something you can't. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I got parades going by. I'm working my butt off to entertain you people. I'm not getting the love back, so I'm going to go backstage, crack open a beer. You guys break into small discussion groups. Decide what the hell you find impressive, all right? <laughs> Peter, I leave you in charge. <laughs> Okay, answer me this. Did you not applaud because you didn't care that your buddy Brune ate fire? Or did you not applaud because your brain is still trying to work out the card trick with Sabrina, right? All right. I'll explain the card trick, guys. Obviously, two things you need to know. One, the story of my accident. That is 100% true. That really happened. I did almost die, but I'm fine. But I have no special powers. Sabrina could have stopped me at any card. Whatever card she stopped me at, trick would have worked. Whatever card Sabrina stopped me at, that card would have been on me somewhere. Right now, in various places around my body, I have stashed away an entire deck of playing cards. <laughs> Thank God she didn't stop us at the Jack of Hearts, which is right now making a very weird temporary tattoo on my taint. Check it out, Peter. I'm making him wink at you. Peter, you've been a good sport so far. Do me a favor, buddy. Name any card. But, Peter, you're not a dumb guy. Not that you would have done this, but don't say five of clubs, right, Jasmine? Yeah, don't say that when that one's gone. Don't say jack of hearts. I just said it. And help me out, gang. It's been a while since I've prayed one by. Was it the ten of diamonds? I said when I was acting like I got it wrong, right? So those three are off the table, but anything else, fair game. Name a card. Seven of hearts. I don't know, Peter. He said seven of hearts. Did I know that? No. Was it backstage having a vision? No. Yeah, watch. I'll dramatically find the seven of hearts. I was backstage with electrodes attached to ferrets while angry ninja midgets made love to Morgan Freeman in a giant dirigible made entirely of crushed Pez, Burt Convy, and Corduroy. I gotta get better at these. Anyway. <laughs> And I saw Peter and the seven of hearts above my waist. The right side of the body should be in this pocket in my doublet. Seven of hearts.
Let this joke in. Don't fight this joke. A lot of you... There we go. Your instinct is to fight it, except that you don't control your world. <laughs> I like the three-step process you went through. You all kind of went, ah, huh? Uh, all right. <laughs> What's really funny about this, I don't want to embarrass anybody, but in a crowd this big, four or five people uh, have no idea why that's funny. And if you came to the fair with one of them folk, you get extra bonus entertainment on the drive home. All the way home in the car, it's going to be like, why did you laugh? It wasn't the seven of hearts. No, it was the five of clubs. It was the card from earlier. It was a callback joke. It was funny. <laughs> You're an idiot. Why am I an idiot? Well, for one thing, you drive an English car. <laughs> Same people aren't getting this one yet either, are they? I think you're just milking two nearby goats. <laughs> Come here, Jasmine. Another card. See my show 50 more times, you'll get a very suspicious dick. <laughs> Hurry up. Please move quicker, Jasmine. Yay. <laughs> and you always get an animal, but I'm a little pressed for time, so snake. Here I go again on my own. Yeah. It was a white snake. Come on. Come on. Wake up, old people. Our culture's not dead yet. It's coughing up blood, but it ain't dead yet. <laughs> now, maybe you'll applaud if the fire eating is a little more dangerous. I should probably move this whip I'm tripping on. I should probably stop spilling fire near my open source of fuel, too. All right, here we go. Maybe this one will bring a little more love back. This one does hurt, so I'm not doing it twice. Yeah. I learned. Yeah. I figured you people out. I eat fire, nobody cares. I light myself on fire. <laughs> Bunch of weirdos. <laughs> Two at once. Long time dream. I'm a giant man. Two people can make love to me at once and never meet. <laughs> now, the wind is a factor. A lot of people might be nudging their partners going, I'll bet you the wind just blows it out. No, it gives it more oxygen, makes it into a, like a rocket, and it's blowing it right toward my face, so this is going to be tricky. <laughs> oh, damn it. <laughs> Take that picture. Tell me you saw the world's stupidest fire eater. <laughs> Ow, my, my rods and cones. <laughs> all right, don't make me laugh. I shoot fire out of my nose, all right? Trust me, that's the better of two options. The other option is I fart and rocket myself into the dice tent again. God, the bloody wind. Look at this. Damn you, Gaia, I gave you a goat. Somebody explain that joke to the Christians. And while you're at it, tell them why they really got that whole put a tree in their house every December thing from. <laughs> Oh, they won't like the answer. <laughs> what, that's pagan? Yes, that's pagan. You borrowed a lot. <laughs> God, I'm feeling manly. God, I'm feeling macho. My nipples are erect with excitement. <laughs> God, I'm feeling manly. God, I'm feeling macho. My nipples are erect with excitement. Wait, I got one more. I think I got one more. God, I'm feeling manly. God, I'm feeling macho. I'm a kitty cat, and my nipples are erect with excitement. <laughs> I'm going to be very honest with you people. I have a really cool finale plan, but how many of you just want me to keep making Kevin say weird stuff like that? <laughs> I will now swallow this bowling ball. And then 25 minutes afterwards, an even more impressive stunt. With a brief appearance by an extremely tightly rolled jack of hearts. Little boy in the pirate hat in the back row. Little boy in the pirate hat, what is your name? 
Ezra, come be in my show. Give it up for Ezra, everybody. Good job, Ezra. You're named after a mediocre rock and roll band from the 90s. All right, stand right there, Ezra. I know it's biblical. Face the audience. Everyone say, hi, Ezra. Hi, Ezra. Ezra, say, hi, audience. Hi, audience. Very good. I like your energy. Ezra, put your arms out like this. I'm going to hand you the bowling ball. You're going to hold it like that, all right? Wrap your arms around it. I'm letting go. Ezra, I'm take off the hat if you don't mind. I'm going to set that right there. Ezra, I am required by law to give you some high-tech OSHA-approved safety gear. Until we find some, I'll just use this crappy helmet I found last night next to the tiny charred body of a small flying squirrel. Mm. Tasted like moose and regret. It's either of the really bitchin' sort of... Uh, Anthony Perkins thing that you're rocking right there. <laughs> to dig deep for that one. All right. Ezra, big loud voice so mom's camera can hear you and people in the back can hear you. You're not wearing a microphone like me. You've got to project for the diaphragm. You ready, buddy? Repeat after me. Hi. Hi. State your name. State your name. Ezra. 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 I promise. I promise. To hold. To hold. This ball. This ball. Forever. Forever is an awfully long time, Sisyphus. That's right, a Greek mythology joke. I'm bringing them back. Peter, buddy, you've been a good sport. Leave your thermos behind. Move to the aisle. Give it up for Peter, everybody. Move to the aisle, Peter. Peter, I'm going to toss you an apple. Do me a favor. Take the sticker off, unlike the last guy who left it on. Uh, go back one big step, Peter. Back one big step. All right, Peter, say hi to Ezra. Ezra, say hi to Peter. Here's what we're going to do, gentlemen. I'm going to begin by lighting a torch. After I do that, Ezra, you're going to place the bowling ball into my hand. All right, big guy? I'm going to light this on fire, but hold it over here. You're going to hand me the ball. That's all you got to do. Peter, buddy, you will then toss the apple. You understand? I'm sorry? Give me a second. Give me a second? Okay. Okay. No, you got the hard job. <laughs> yeah. What you're doing is hard, Peter. Oh, your mind's eye. All right, Peter, you will then toss the apple. Do you understand? Okay, I'm going to light the torch. I will light the torch. The kid will hand me the ball. You will toss the apple. The important word there, uh, Ezra. Peter is toss. Don't fling it at me. I will then juggle one soon-to-be blazing torch, one 10-pound bowling ball, one 4-ounce apple, while simultaneously, and at the same time, I will eat the apple, not the torch, not the bowling ball. If this trick worked, cool, because it didn't in the simulator. In the simulator, I just kept killing the kid. A mellow kid, right, Mom? Yeah. <laughs> Folks, this will serve as the finale of the show. At the end of my performance, I'll retire to the back of the auditorium with a basket. I'll be to the basket right down front. If you enjoyed my show, and if you can afford to, please stop by either basket, drop a little something in. Traveling this grand country of ours, doing comedy variety shows. This is really what I do for a living. I'm a hardworking blue collar entertainer. Please hear that last part again, as it's kind of important here in a second or two. I ain't rich. I'm sure as heck not famous. I'm more famous than most of you, but that's not saying very much. <laughs> So if you thought that I'm worthwhile, that I should have a place in your culture, and I hope that you do think that I should, because remember, the culture is what you support. The culture is what you support. If more people came to Ren Fairs and supported artists like me and tuned out of the real housewives of who gives a damn, we may have a more intelligent culture. Can I get an amen? So thank you for being here, thank you for buying the ticket, and thank you in advance for supporting me. If I gave you guys $5 worth of laughter and fun, drop in five bucks. I gave you $10 worth of laughter and fun, you're like, man, that broom guy was funny. <laughs> drop it a tent. <laughs> Excuse me. Very dusty out here. Let me cough a second. <clears throat> if I gave you $20 worth of laughter and fun, you guys are like, that guy. Awesome. Yay, Ezra. I'm trying to make my living. <laughs> no, 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 no. I did it. If you a few big spenders in the crowd are like, that guy was funny, he was cool, I can afford it. I'm going to throw in a big donation. I'm going to throw a 20 in. That guy was awesome. Uh, don't feel bad about your 20s, guys. We have ATMs here. You can always restock. Uh, if you came to the fair today not knowing that Ren Fairs tend to be powered by tips and things like this, you need to bring a lot of loose cash. I have QR codes on both baskets. Let your smart device see those. It'll queue up my PayPal and my Venmo. Now, before we get to that, uh, the Internet here is a little dodgy, as I'm sure you've already noticed. That may not work. Everybody listen up. My PayPal and Venmo handle is the same at both locations. Bruins Hat. Pass the hat. My name is Bruin. We get it. So the name behind me, B-R-O-O-N, 
S-H-A-T. Now, yes, before you say anything, I chose that during the pandemic. I wasn't aware I'm not going to be able to use an apostrophe before the S. So actually, my online money-making handle is Bruin Shat. So if that helps you remember it, that's fine. If this coming Tuesday or Wednesday, you're like, I want to give that guy 20 bucks. What was it again? Oh, that's right. Bruin pooped. Speaking of online stuff, please hashtag all your pics and videos of me, Bruin Show. That's where I am on Instagram and Facebook. I do a stream every Wednesday called Beer and Songs. You can find that at my Twitch page, which is at both those locations. If you do drop 20 bucks into my basket today, either real or virtual, you'll receive a pin that says, my nipples are erect with excitement. You've been an absolutely fantastic audience. Your, your mom? All right, put down the ball, Ezra. Put down the ball. Uh, Peter, I'm actually moving to one side so mom gets a good photograph. All right, hold the whip. Look at mommy, look at mommy, look at mommy, Ezra. Here we go. Look excited, look excited, Ezra. <laughs> she get it? She got it, great, grab the ball. Your mom's a freak, am I right, Ezra? She can call that photograph the last day I had unsupervised visitation. <laughs> I had to find my lighter here, Ezra. That's not it. It's a callback joke for the smart people. All right, Ezra, I'm going to toss the torch. You then begin juggling. Is he always this mellow, Mom? You know I'm kidding, right? That's why you're not. It's funny when the kid goes, ah, but you're like a really cool kid. You know that I'm kidding. I'm not going to throw a torch at another kid, right, Ezra? I am not going to throw a torch at another kid. <laughs> I am not going to throw a torch at another kid. <laughs> the other kid had it coming. <laughs> He just stood there expressionless. <laughs> the side eye he just gave me. You're a genius, Ezra. All right, Ezra, place the ball in my hand, buddy. Take off the helmet, put it in the basket, grab your pirate hat, bow to the audience, show them respect. Ezra, you can go, you can go. All right, Peter, backstage center, or to the center of the, don't eat the apple, Peter. <laughs> All right, Peter, back center on the aisle. Don't worry about mom right now. I'll move over here for her. All right, Peter, this is the part of the show where you toss the apple. I then begin juggling. <laughs> What's a good time for you, Peter? Oh, no. Oh, no. You don't have a watch. <laughs> All right, Peter, that was the cue. Oh, sorry. Right, but now we're talking. Now we're talking. <laughs> Kevin, do you know where it went? Where did it go, Peter? Could you please pick it up? It's backstage? Yeah, it's all the way back. All right, just keep an eye on the torch. It shouldn't burn anything up. I got it, I got it. Yeah, just move the basket a bit. Thank you, Peter. All right, Peter, here's what happened. Have I made a horrible mistake picking this guy? Peter, you're not much for physical stunts. I'm guessing you're in the IT field. All right. As is half the audience, shut up. All right, but I think Peter makes a good point without even making it. You wanted me to go ready, set, go, and that is not a bad idea. That's a good idea. So here's what we'll do this time. I'll go one, two, three. This is actually a good idea. And then we all say, Peter, chocolate, fruit. Peter, fruit. Now, your throw was good. I just was in casual mode. This time I'll be ready for it, all right? So let's review really quick. Well, I got a new backup torch. It's one, two, three. Peter, chuck that fruit. Wait for fruit, Peter. I juggle, nice high arcing throw. You sit back down. I eat, I don't burn, I don't crush. The more I eat, the more you guys applaud. The show ends, the applause is deafening as both my baskets fill the capacity because we love the Brune Show. We love the Brune Show. We love the Brune Show. Good, my children. Everyone into the compound for Kool-Aid. I will say this from artichoke guy to khaki shorts guy to Peter's whole crew, even you guys over here, everybody in front pay attention in case I screw this up. That includes you too, Kevin, all right? So I'm going to ask you to back up a little bit, Kevin, so you can see in case the torch is coming towards you, all right, buddy? Yeah, there we go. Now, okay. All right, Peter, once I'm juggling, sit on back down, and don't forget you still have a sticker on your forehead. I don't want you walking around all day like that. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Okay, on three, it's Peter, Chuck, Dad, and then fruit. All right, here we go. One, two, three. Peter, Chuck, Dad, fruit. Good job, Peter. 
Okay, remember our deal. The more we eat, the louder we get. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. I do want to leave with a final thought before I meet you in the back. If you look around yourselves right now, folks, you'll see Latino people, Asian people, black people, white people, Muslims, Jews, Hindus, Christians, flying spaghetti monster people, gay people, straight people, bigendered people, people still working on that puzzle piece of their life. And if I did my job correctly over the past 40 minutes, none of those labels normally used to divide us mattered. We were just people together having a good time. My name is Brune. Thank you all so very, very much. Keep it going for Kevin! <laughs> thank you, Peter. Thank that kid. That kid was adorable. Oh, thank you, sir. Here, take a pin. Thank you. If you want a pin, make sure I see the 20 go in like I did with that gentleman. Make just say, hey, here's my 20. Give me a pull. Be nice about it, but you know.